Uh, we'll start, uh, if you don't know me yet, I'm Alini, I'm Bootcamp Manager at Lewago Montreal. It's a really a pleasure for me to be here tonight uh, hosting this event. Uh, this is the result of uh, nine weeks of very intense work from those students. I'm very proud of them. They are very hard workers, motivated people. Uh, and the, the apps are amazing, so you will see uh, uh, right now in a few minutes. Uh, before we start, if ever you never used uh, live storm in your life, uh, you can see there is a chat uh, tab, so you can use it, ask, uh, uh, add your comments. And there is also a questions tab. Uh, we'll open for questions and answers uh, right after each pitch and also at the end of the event. Uh, feel free to start asking them right now so they are already open and if ever we run out of time we're gonna uh, choose the questions with more votes so you can also vote on questions uh, if you want feel free to use them it's open already and uh, that's it uh, so uh, we'll start with the pictures very soon uh, before i actually wanted to uh, do a really quick presentation about le wagon if ever you never heard about us before uh, so le wagon we are a coding school that teaches uh, stu students the technical skills uh, and entrepreneurial mindset they need to thrive and uh, we do that uh, with uh, boot camps so we have two boot camps running right now one in web dev and another one in data science uh, uh, in a very intense uh, format. So we have a uh, full time in nine weeks uh, from nine to 6 p.m. every day or part time version for people who wants to keep their jobs or freelancing uh, activities uh, where you study at nights and weekends uh, for both programs, web dev and data science. Uh, tonight, tonight, tonight it will be more about the data science, so you will discover what it's uh, able to accomplish at the end of the bootcamp, so it's very interesting. Uh, in terms of an overview of our community, um, we are very proud to be uh, the most acclaimed coding bootcamp in the world. Um, if you go to switch up uh, course report, you can see uh, the reviews from our students and their real stories, everything that they share about how was their journey with us. Um, and I really advise you to go there if ever you want to know more about us, about our, our culture and our community. Uh, we are also very proud to be a very international uh, uh, community. We started in Paris in 2013 and right now in our, we are in more than 40 cities around the world, a very rich a uh, diverse community with more than 9,000 uh, bootcamp graduates. Uh, we are also very focused on practice and product. It means that our students, they learn a lot by doing and they build products at the end of the bootcamps. Uh, it also uh, means that we attract entrepreneurs to our bootcamps. We have more than 100 startups that were launched after the program and more than 2,000 uh, web applications built as well. And now uh, today, uh, those uh, seven students, they are joining this uh, great uh, community for life. Uh, so this is just uh, a slide to show actually uh, how uh, big it is and how uh, uh, happy we are that you're joining our community uh, tonight. So in terms of the curriculum of the Data Science Bootcamp, uh, it's a very unique uh, skill set uh, to start their tech journey. Um, so they start um, the seven first weeks of the program. They are uh, with lectures and a lot of challenges. Uh, they start with Python, SQL. They learn everything they need to know about decision science. Uh, they also dive into machine learning, deep learning, data engineering. So it's a very intense, intense program that get them ready to start uh, their new career in data. And uh, that's why uh, uh, part of our program is also focused on products. So as I said, uh, the seven first weeks, they are uh, dedicated to challenges and lectures. And the two last weeks, uh, they code the products they're going to show us tonight. Uh, and it's really interesting because they're ready to, to join the job market uh, with those skills. This is one of the reasons why we are trusted by the best tech companies in the world and also locally. So if ever uh, you are curious, you also want to connect with our talented graduates, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And uh, right now, actually, the night, it's all about them. Uh, I wanted to introduce you a little bit to this batch in particular. Uh, guys from the batch, I don't know if you remember, uh, this is the picture of one of our first days together. We were so excited to start. And since that, uh, since that day, it was such an incredible journey with you. Uh, I'm really proud again to be here tonight, uh, uh, seeing the result of all that uh, uh, effort. And I wanted to introduce each one of you before we start with the pitches. So. Starting with Antoine, Antoine is a product manager and also right now a data science graduate. We have Ben, a commodity trading advisor and also tonight a data science graduate. 
Gisela, scientist with academic background in mathematics and computational finance, and tonight also data science graduate. Jerome, with studies in pure and applied science. Hanen, buyer and part-time yoga teacher and also data science graduate tonight. Sade, construction engineering, engineer. And last but not least, Samuel, uh, who identifies himself as an internet veteran and also data science graduate tonight. So actually, I have a like, quick video to introduce you to how I was spending those last nine uh, weeks with them and uh, just for you to have an idea of how it was. Amazing. Are you ready to show those, those projects? Yes, Noshin, I see you love the video. You're part of it as well. <laughs> uh, let's go. So starting uh, with the first one, the first group is market prediction. Please uh, come on on stage and we'll see this app. Hello, everyone. Hello. So just a second, so we enable a Ben's uh, camera. <laughs> How are you feeling? Good? Good, fine. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Very excited. Excited, excited. It looks like everyone here is super excited to start. Yes. <laughs> Ben, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. I am just uh, doing some last-minute debugging, it appears. <laughs> it's okay, you we can hear you. Skill. <laughs> it's all part of the plan. Don't worry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, But uh, at least you're there. <laughs> we didn't lose you on the way. Yeah, I still can't enable my camera. No problem. So maybe uh, uh, somewhere we can introduce the team and then uh, we start the pitch. We're going to hear you perfectly. <laughs> or uh, you can introduce the team as well if you want, uh, Ben. Sure. I'm Ben Blatt. I'm mostly here. I'm joined by Sadek, Samuel, and Antonio. I'm sorry, and Antoine. And we are the market prediction team at La Wagon, Montreal. Can you share your screen? I can. Picture yourself as a new investor to the stock market. There are over 6,000 stocks on the US markets to choose from alone. Which should you buy? How much of it? What happens when you win? What happens when you lose? These are questions every investor needs to answer. We wanted to build an app to help guide the new user to make some of these decisions in a better way. The first step in building our tool was to find the data. 
There are Kaggle data sets. There are thousands of websites to scrape from, as well as APIs. The API turned out to be the best choice for us. It allowed us to seamlessly update our data sets on a nightly basis. As well, this allows our end user to get a new forecast every single day. The next step in our process was finding models to train. We started with LSTM models, XGBoost, and Profit. LSTM is architecture for deep learning recurrent neural networks. XGBoost is decision tree based ensemble machine learning algorithm. And Facebook Profit is a library of algorithms specifically made for time series that include seasonality, trends, and holidays. Ultimately, we chose to work with the Facebook Profit model as it gave us the most accurate predictions and confidence intervals. One of the more interesting things we came across when training the model was how to deal with the changing uncertainty in seasonality that was caused by a 35% drop in one month in the stock market earlier this year because of the COVID pandemic. At this point, I'd like to have Sadeg tell you a little bit more about our process and demonstrate our product for you. Thank you, Ben. First, I'm going to wrap up quickly. Here are the steps for developing our application. We had API for data gathering. We selected Facebook profit model because it worked well with our time series data. We create a dashboard using a stream lead, and at the end, we deploy our app on Heroku. During the pandemic, I'm staying in, traveling less, and working from home. So I have been able to, to put some extra money aside despite the economic crisis. What should I do? Should I invest it or save it? Honestly, I'm so excited to start investing, but what investment gives me the best returns? Let's see how to, how to see this application can help me. First, I'm going to start with Apple. This is my favorite company. I love its product. I will start with initial budget of $1,000. I need to wait a couple of minutes. Okay, it's good. Okay. According to this prediction, my investment will be 1100. I hope I will find a better choice. Let's try a healthcare company. I heard promise news about them. If I invest $1,000 in UTMD, I need wait, okay. My investment will be 1,400. It's very good, it's better choice. And also I have the range of prediction. It's amazing. This option helps me for making right decision and also I can control my financial risk. Guys, if, if you want to get into investing, but you don't feel like an expert, I recommend using this app for selling and buying the stocks. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Sadek. At this point, we'd like to invite our partners, Samuel and Antoine, onto the stage to answer any questions you have for us. Great job, team. Amazing. So just waiting a little bit for Antoine to join the stage. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sadev and Ben. That was uh, really, really amazing. Straight to yes. the point. Um, I think you guys have all seen the major steps that were involved in the application. But I want you all to keep in mind that we just did this in over a week uh, out of the nine weeks of the boot camp. And so, um, we're really proud of the outcome, and we really see that this is just a prototype of what where we can go. So feel free to ask any type of questions. Samuel and I are ready to answer everything you have. And 
Yeah, and uh, actually, I, I have one question for you uh, uh, before people start asking questions. Why? What did you learn the most on Project Weeks? Um, Samuel, I'm gonna go ahead, and then I can give you the let you speak. I think the most important thing for us was to work in groups because, as you know, we all come from diverse backgrounds, and uh, we had to communicate with each other all the time. I mean, I'm not used to looking at the three same faces of the same guys for three weeks in a row. I mean, it, it's not easy. And it's not easy to be able to um, get a comprehensive plan in such a short time. So I think one of the best things was learn to cooperate together and create um, a great outcome. Okay. What do you think, Sam? Thank you. Absolutely. Great. Also, another thing was how to work efficiently. Like when you have a task, but you have several people working together and sometimes we have tasks at different level different stage of the development how can we start working on something that is not yet completed that was also something a bit difficult but but we manage completely so i was very happy that we were able to work efficiently for these two weeks Amazing. There, there are a lot of questions coming on the chat. So uh, just for you to know, uh, everyone in the audience, we'll spend uh, uh, a bit uh, five minutes with this group. Then um, the other group will come. We'll have five minutes with them for questions and answers. And then we see if ever we have a lot, we also continue some uh, questions and answers after. Um, so uh, maybe I can go with the first one with uh, more votes. Um, what would you like to do next with the software that you developed? Well, right now we're predicting for one stock, something we really would like in the near future would be to be able to mix different stocks. Because of course, when you invest, you don't bet only on one company, you want to diverse. So that's something we'd like to develop, having several categories, several uh, industries, and then within the industry, several stocks to see the output. And then of course, with more time, we would like to apply more uh, um, text uh, description, you know, like a, going to scrap from website of news to see if there's news impacting a company or in job listing boards, seeing company hiring and maybe get more prediction on the stocks. Amazing. There is one from Richard. You might remember him from uh, first weeks. Would it be possible to apply the model to crypto uh, currency market? Um, to answer your question, Richard, we actually can apply this model to any uh, any symbol, any stock, or any cryptocurrency that we have, because our model, which is developed, the algorithm itself is an open source uh, product developed by Facebook, and it works well with all types of products because and companies because they take into uh, consideration seasonality trends. Um, so it really uh, trains on any type of company. But we just picked a few well-known ones just to demonstrate the power of our algorithm good and maybe we have time for one more and we see if we need to we can go back after um so there is one uh, from the Xing. how is the prediction calculated so basically it takes uh, all the previous uh, uh, prices uh, closing prices and then it's based on that uh, it's predict within a year uh, also the this model what helped a lot is that it was really taking account like we said seasonality and also it was better interpreting like recurring uh, events so if there was events happening every month it will keep it in mind and not just make a simple linear model so this is why we prefer profit it was very better for us that was a excellent choice Amazing. So uh, we are done with the questions of this block. Uh, I wanted to thank you uh, guys uh, for this amazing presentation. It was great. And right now I'm going to call the second group on stage and we'll see their F ask questions and then we open for extra questions that you might have. Thank you so much for answering thank all of the questions. And uh, see you soon. So uh, now it's time for Posture Wizard to join the stage. Uh, please, team members, feel free to join the stage and start your presentation. Hello, Gisela. Hello. Hello, team. The stage is yours. Awesome. So I'd like to introduce to my team and the uh, app that we worked on. It's, my name is Ronin, Gisela, and Jérôme, and we, we all worked on the Posture Wizard. I'll start off by sharing my screen, and then we'll head straight to how everything worked. OK. So as a start, 
I'm just going to let you know a little bit on why we decided to go for this. The idea behind it is that I'm sure many of you have suffered from neck pain, shoulder pain, lower back pain, or some sort of pain because of laptops, phones, or sitting for too much. So the idea behind this app is to actually take a picture of you from the side and then suggest simple stretches and exercises that are based on these identifications that would help your posture and then in turn would actually reduce the pain. Uh, first, we're going to start off of how we actually collected the data. So we needed two sources of data, one for the model to train it and one for the exercises. For the model, uh, we used 860 total images, all from Google Images. And then we divided them into two classes, good posture and then kyphosis, or in other words, hunchback. There are also other classes, but for the scope of this project and the timeline that we had, we decided to only focus on two. Then we had the exercise data. So we needed to get it out from a fitness API. In other words, fitness uh, API is an internet resource to get a variety of exercises. And we had our own file to match the exercise with the muscle that you're actually focusing on. After that, we put our images into the pipeline. So this is just a snapshot of how the pipeline actually looks like. You have the image, it goes through a few steps, and then you get the exercise. And we're going to go through these steps in details in the next few slides. First one is adding a mask. We used mask CR, uh, RCNN model. So what this, ma this uh, model does, it actually takes, it can detect the people in any image. And it usually detects more than one person. So we made sure, we adjusted it to make sure that it only detects the main person and just clears out any noise in the background. And here's an example of one of our uh, uh, samples that we had and how it actually detects the person. Once we have the masked image, it goes through our CNN model. So basically, for our model, we took 80% of our data to train the model. So, um, so if you can understand the difference between kyphosis and a good posture, and then 20% was just to test it. And then the CNN model would classify it. In the right side of uh, the slide, you can find the architecture of this model. And we used ResNet type architecture for whoever wants to know. Once it goes through CNN model, it makes the prediction. Just to let you know, we started with a baseline accuracy of 56%. What I mean by that is that without using anything, without adjusting any images, and just a simple model would get 56% accuracy. So 56 of our percent of our images were correct. The rest were not um, correctly categorized. What we did to fix that and to uh, improve that, first is we added this RCNN mask that I've already showed you cleaned up some of our data and made sure that the model would focus on where the person is, so where the mask is, and just avoid any noise in the background of the image. Once it makes that prediction, it goes through uh, the exercises and matches it accordingly. Now, Gisela is going to go through the uh, app and how we actually, how you can actually use the app. Hello, everybody. My name is Gisela, and uh, we're going through our app, The Posture Wizards. So uh, the steps are pretty simple. We're going to upload a side picture of ourselves. Uh, here, we're going to select a picture of Ranin. So Ranin, for those who don't know, she is a professional trainer. So this picture here is a picture from Ranin, and she claims to be at the top of the fitness world. But let's just not believe that and see what the wizard thinks about that. So we're going to hit wizard evaluation. And fantastic, the wizard agree with Ranin. And she has the perfect uh, posture. But you see this picture is uh, from nine weeks ago. And let's see what those long days and nights coding did to her posture. So we're going to upload another picture and see uh, how it is today. All right, we're going to hit the wizard evaluation to see what's happening. Oh no, it looks like she has kyphosis, but there is a good news. Uh, well, we can select which body part we want to work on. We can select the neck or the shoulder. So Ranin has been complaining these last two days that her shoulder is too stiff, like it just hurts too bad. So we're gonna select the shoulder. When we select the shoulder, we can have three choices. We can either go with the body weight, the dumbbells, or the bands. Now Ranin has dumbbells at her home, so we're going to select dumbbells and hit get your plan to see what the wizard says about all of that. 
All right, now there is a recommended exercises. The first one is a stretching exercise. Well, you can see the instruction, you can see the repetition, and you can even see which muscle you're working on. And the second category is the strengthening exercises. And uh, we have not one, but two of those. So you have the choice. And again, you have the instructions, the repetition, and these exercises, guys, Ranin, like I said, is a uh, professional trainer. It helped all of her clients. So she knows what's happening. So as you can see, our wizard's powers are real and uh, very lit. And uh, uh, I'm going to thank you for uh, listening and uh, hope you've seen uh, the value in our app. I'm going to call my teammates uh, so that we can uh, get your questions, reactions, etc. Thank you. Amazing. Great job on the pitch. Uh, really good. So uh, right now, uh, feel free to ask your questions to this team if ever you're interested about a specific topic. I have one question for you. Uh, what was the more challenging part of this project in specific? Uh, yeah, we actually discussed about that today. Um, and we had, ended up uh, thinking the most difficult part was uh, working with very small data. Like, as we said, we collected the data, uh, data ourselves and labeled it ourselves. So yeah, getting good result with that type of data was difficult, but we're still glad we did it because uh, like working with small amount of uh, raw and uh, unpolished data is like a, we feel like is a more like a real world approach. And uh, yeah, we're very glad we got to work with that and get some good results. That's amazing. And actually, I had a follow another question that came to my mind, uh, actually, for both groups, but, uh, but it could start with you. Uh, how was uh, collaborating in this uh, moment of social distancing? Uh, do you have any tips for people who wants to learn <laughs> with that uh, environment? Uh, yeah, well, we, we used uh, Zoom to like uh, talk to each other and uh, some other like applications like Trello boards and but uh, yeah, like Obviously, Zoom isn't as efficient as sitting uh, around the same table. So staying in the Zoom call and constantly uh, asking about your teammates, how they're doing, if they need, to need a hand, and like more often than you would do in real life, I think helped a lot for us. Yeah, amazing, good tip. I agree. <laughs> I agree with you. We need to be extra in communication. So I see uh, a lot of questions already here. Let's go to, to some. Uh, some of them. Uh, there is one related to your app. I spend a lot of time sitting. Could you extend this to pictures of people sitting at their desk instead of standing? There is opportunity actually with that, um, where there's exercises where they're sitting on the desk and like stretch or mobilize a little bit. So there's a honestly, there's a lot of potential where we sh show different types of postures and also show things where if you're at the office or not at the office, uh, exercise for office, at, not at the office, make it simple, quick, and uh, easy to, to handle, really. Yeah, it's a, it's a good, uh, super good question. There is also uh, about uh, the amount of data. Uh, how would you collect, collect more data, for example, by working with teams and making this benefit you by getting the data and then by giving their cl the clients the, the app? So uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's also another good question. Uh, yeah, we, we also talked about that today. Um, uh, Renin, I think, had a really great idea to scrape, um, scrape Instagram. And we could use our model to like, for, make a first uh, like, filter. Mm -hmm. to, and uh, yeah, scrape Instagram, get some, some posture, like hashtag kyphosis or hashtag uh, bad posture. Or, and yeah, use our model to like first filter the data and then go through it again, make sure it's the, the, right, uh, the right label. But yeah, that would be like much, much faster to get some data now that we have like a, a decent baseline model. Yeah, true. And uh, the, I'm going to click on done for this uh, question. There is one that we already covered, the, the biggest challenge of this uh, app in specifically. And there is a comment, uh, will it be developed? I need this really badly. <laughs> uh well we are still thinking about it uh we were talking about it uh the last couple of days uh we are really excited about the app obviously and uh we see a lot of potential 
uh, we said that we were going to talk about it like a team and uh, see uh, where it goes. Maybe uh, use it uh, like, a, like an app on the phone or uh, also uh, maybe not using the online so that you can use it offline. So those are all possibilities. So uh, we are still talking about it and we'll see uh, how it goes. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sim. Uh, we went through the, the five minutes with you specifically, but now we're going to open actually for uh, extra questions uh, for both groups. So uh, everyone in the audience, feel free to ask questions if they're related to the first app or the second app or anything else that may be related to the bootcamp. Uh, feel free to ask your questions. Um, so I think I saw one here that uh, could relate to uh, all of you. Um, it was uh, with Noshin. Noshin asked, uh, what was the hardest part of the boot camp for you? Why and why? That's a good question. And uh, the uh, other group for you to join the stage as well, if ever you want to answer that question. <laughs> well, uh, if I'm being completely honest, Machine, uh, I started the boot camp. Uh, I really didn't have a job, and the rhythm was uh, was just crazy. So the first two weeks. Just getting into the rhythm, uh, working early, coding for I don't know how many hours. Yeah, that that was hard. But uh, yeah, you just have to keep uh, like the motivation up, and the team is great. Actually, uh, the Wagon people, the teachers, awesome people, and uh, my teammates, uh, even the the one who did the other projects. Everybody, he was awesome. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the hardest part, the rhythm. <laughs> yeah, I concur with that. I think every week it was like, wow, this is so hard topic to learn. And then the week after was even harder, but it made the previous topic look so much easier. It's a good thing that it, everything was built on the previous week. So we're keeping using what we learned before. So then also, as uh, he said, like Le Wagon really, really helped us a lot. Like it's very well structured with uh, teachers, TA. So, you know, you're not alone. You have a and you had the chance to have a, a really good team learning with me. So that was good. We were helping each other. So, but yeah, it's like now. I mean, for all of us realizing all we learned in just nine weeks, it's really crazy. And uh, Richard just added a comment to do your flashcards. <laughs> <Oops>. Awesome, <Yeah>. Richard. <laughs> Let me see if we have uh, other questions. Um, uh, Vera was asking, what are the next steps planned? We can uh, answer with both groups. Uh, if ever you, you want other members uh, to come, uh, leave the stage, and they will have the chance to come to yeah. the stage. So uh, feel free to answer that question as well. For any, us? any next steps planned for the, the apps? Um, OK, I'll go ahead. So for us, we just mainly used uh, share prices, mainly looked at charts, but we know that in real life, um, the stock market is actually way more complex. So there are emotions involved, there are news, there's news involved. And um, since we're all passionate about the subject, it's not gonna be difficult for us to keep improving, even as a side business or whatever it is. But it's um, the possibilities are endless because I see that we did, you know, really did, um, everything we could to have a really straightforward output. So we see a lot of possibilities moving forward. For us, um, we really enjoyed it. Actually, we really, uh, we really enjoyed working together and uh, we decided to just kind of go with it, find more data, try the other class and uh, see where it goes from there. But we definitely, we plan to just keep working together on it because we're really, we're just enjoying it right now. Good. There is another question about uh, the projects. Uh, how are they chosen? Are they picked by the team or uh, Le Wagon? So I can answer this question because uh, I'm from the team. Uh, all the, the, the ideas, they are from the students. They pitch and they vote. So they rank the ideas uh, at uh, some moment in the bootcamp uh, uh, closer to the project weeks. Uh, and the, it's basically their ideas. Uh, they, they develop it, they code it, they do everything. So it's a very satisfying for them uh, um, because it's, it comes from them. So I'm going to stop done with this uh, question. 
Um, let me see here if I, I skipped one of them so we can answer. No, I think we went through most of them. Um, maybe uh, there is a question about uh, current uh, limitations. Maybe this could uh, uh, be related to improvements you plan to do it in the, like, the next steps. So if ever uh, you want to share uh, something that you might do for improvement, feel free to join the stage. Yeah, um, Arjun talked about a lot of, um, like we said, we we reduce the scope of a project to only categorize one type of posture. posture. So um, categorizing other like spinal, um, not injuries, but like malformation or of uh, due to working. And so yeah, categorizing other bad postures and uh, yeah, making it work on a phone. That would be like <laughs> the, the, the most like awesome thing. Yeah. Yes, yes, because they have two weeks to code and do all of that, and it's pretty impressive. So they have to prioritize at, at some point uh, what they're, they're going to do. But uh, as we said, uh, they have like possibility to really uh, improve it uh, and make it better. So I'm going to do an answering here. Feel free to ask other questions. I'm going to check on the chat as well if ever we had anything coming here. Ah, OK, so we had uh, actually a question on the chat. Um, how did how long did it take to train the the posture app the the CNN? Feel free to come back to the stage. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, like we trained a lot of different models to to test it, and um, because our data was so small, uh, it didn't took very long. Obviously, it depends on the model. The more complex it is, the longer it takes to train. But uh, I would say, like, yeah, depending of the model, between uh, 15 to 30 minutes to train one model. Awesome. There is a, a follow-up question from Lucas. Where uh, did you train the model? I trained the model on uh, Google Colab. Great. And uh, there is a question that maybe both groups uh, could answer. Uh, have the teams looked at competitors? Are there something similar in the market? Um, so we had a period to um, look into competitors, but in, the, in the, that period that I checked, for example, for the posture wizards, didn't find anything that does, what, like there are certain posture apps, but accuracy level is quite low and nothing that actually brings out the uh, workouts or exercises. So not really, not for that specifically. What about your market prediction? Not exactly competitors as a product per se, but uh, about trading the models and trying profit or other models. We tried like uh, XGBoost or LSTM, I think. There was some other people trying it, and we saw articles about other sharing how they tried, what kind of parameters they optimized, so yeah. we could compare with others, yeah. Okay, awesome. And uh, I, maybe there's a more technical question here from Simon. Uh, did you use TensorFlow or Keros? Yes, we did. There's one person. Hello, Isla, coming to the stage. <laughs> I think I think we covered all the questions. Yes, yes, I don't see any other new ones. Uh, I wanted to congratulate actually both teams. It was uh, amazing. The pitch night, uh, a pleasure to, to see the final results of all that effort. So uh, a next uh, round of applause to both teams. Amazing. And thank you so much, everyone who attended and uh, asked uh, questions. So I have just a few less slides before we finish. Uh, I see a lot of claps here. <laughs> Let me just share my screen quickly with you. Now, here you go. It's my clap slide. <laughs> And I wanted also to thank the amazing team of teachers we have at Lewagong. They made all this possible and they were very kind and uh, uh, very nice with the students. So I wanted to thank a lot for uh, this first batch in Montreal, which is very exciting for us. And uh, if ever you're interested in going deeper uh, and learning data science, we have a batch starting uh, in January 11. So you can apply. It's really less seats right now. And uh, web dev uh, January 11 as well, uh, full time or part time uh, May 8. So uh, right now, we already covered the questions and answers. Let me close here the, the chat. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. And uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. If ever you have other questions for us, feel free to contact us uh, at uh, uh, Montreal, our email or website. And uh, if ever you're looking for talents, 
feel free to contact us as well so we help you uh, connect with the students. Thank you so much for this demo night. It was a pleasure to see you all here and uh, uh, adding your comments and asking questions and everything. Uh, we see each other soon, I hope. Bye-bye. <laughs>